What is up everyone? You saw in the last video, we did some Porsche mods finally. The car looks incredible with this new cage and seats. If you didn't go see it, go watch the last video. The car looks incredible. Also, we have a new Porsche tee and Porsche hoodie. The last Porsche design we did went crazy. We wanted to do another one, so here you guys go. Hop below, shop to me know if there's any left right now. Today, I figured we'd finally touch something we haven't touched, and that is the E36 wagon. Dun, dun, dun. Parts finally showed up for it, so we can actually get onto it. Not as many as I'd like, but we're gonna have a big, major transformation. It's probably gonna be the title. Major trans <laughs> transformation of the E36 wagon. Dun, dun, dun. E36 touring. Wagon touring? Touring. Touring. Spicy sedan? Come here, come on closer. Come on, come on. Come on, we gotta, we gotta wake Spoon up. What does a major transfer, what does a major transformation mean? For you, clothes and wheels. Yeah, of course. <laughs> this thing is absolutely filthy. You guys saw we put the turbo drivetrain in this thing in like three days. We just swapped it in and it's been incredible. Ever since we test drove it, we haven't touched it since because we've been so freaking busy that we haven't been able to look at it. So today, we're fine to play with it. We got coils, we got wheels. <laughs> So to be fair, I really wanted to do like full OEM M aero on the car before we did wheels and coils, like really clean the car up, but it's been very challenging to piece together all the pieces that I needed. Garagistics actually just came without, came out with replica everything M, but it sold out in like 10 minutes. It was good stuff, I was bummed. So hopefully we can get on that list next time. But we're gonna do the Aiden, the Aiden special, completely stock body. Dumped. That's Aiden's move, right? Come yeah, on, you can't tell that, me. That let's, is. let's see a couple of Aiden's flavors. We got this, we got this, and you got this. That's kind of the Aiden style. So Aiden, this is for you. Now you're probably curious, what wheels are we doing, Jimmy? Oh, BMWs make so many good OEM wheels. So many, it's endless. You can do OEM wheels, keep it simple. Uh, you know, make it real drivable. Make it really like usable, like really, like, really functional like really convenient like make it like a nice driving car psych can't be doing that boom we got the eclairs if you guys have been around the channel for a long time you probably haven't ever seen these wheels because these were on the red e36 coupe forever ogs would know these wheels are sick these wheels mean a lot so what are eclairs, right? What are these dope wheels that I've never seen before? Dot, dot, dot. All right, well, they're a European uh, three-piece wheel. Very, very, I hate using the term rare, because then you sound like, oh, I'm just rare. Uncommon. I'm gonna use the word uncommon. They're very uncommon wheels. And one of the craziest parts about them is they actually have stainless steel lips. Isn't that weird? Because they're usually aluminum, right? These are stainless steel. That's why they, if you look at them, they have more of like a, they have a darker hue to them. I did not notice that, that is weird. It's weird, it looks like your mom's fridge, a high-end <laughs> fridge, you know? Because it, it just, it doesn't have the same sheen as aluminum. But the crazy thing is, they're supposed to be super durable. I guess it was like probably like this gimmick in the 90s where they're just like, look at these super strong rims, they're made of steel instead of aluminum. There's like commercials of these things, they're called Radinox lips, and there's commercials of them people just like their whole commercial was people just doing burnouts with with no tires on just bearing them into the concrete and they're like look they're mint because they're stainless steel eclairs very uncommon wheels very cool styling nothing beats a five spoke these were a good friend of mine that was on his car for a long time and on my e36 for a long time they look sick and uh the european for the euro car for the euro car First step of all of this is to get some coilovers on this thing so we can drop it down. To be fair, I'm gonna kind of miss the sleeper look. Actually, no, not at all. <laughs> like, not, like, 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 you're like, be real with yourself. Yeah, no, I mean, it was like cool that you're like, hey, do you know that thing makes like 500 horsepower into the hood of this thing? Like, it's cool, but like, yeah. You know what they say, it's like, it's, it's the only thing that matters is what's on the inside, right? When it comes to cars, I'm, I'm a shallow dog. <laughs> 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 the outside's gotta look good too. There we go. <sighs> look at those skinny things. These are kind of cool. They look like a like a steely that's an alloy. Does that make sense? Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. 
Everyone was like, oh, Auto caps. you should do a uh, three-piece conversion. That'd be really cool. See the vision. I see the vision. I, I always see the, the vision. I get it. I don't know if I'd want to spend $3,500 to get those converted into a three-piece, though. Yeah. You want to spend it? No. No, <laughs> right? <laughs> It's coming. Could <laughs> 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 be like that sometimes. So as long as nothing's rusty and seized, BMWs have probably one. BMWs E36s have probably one of the easiest coilover installs. I'm jinxing it. Just jinxing it. Watch me go to the other side and fight me. No way. They put red Loctite on the factory spent. That's <laughs> that guy in Germany. All right. Whoever <laughs> 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 did that? Someone was. Oh my god. Things. You find the mystery shut tops yet? Yeah. Those weren't easy to get to, huh? That's like the whole rear part. That's crazy. Smooth fashion E36 is back here. All my love for E36s are gone. CD changer? Yeah. Six disc CD changer. You remember CDs? Yeah, absolutely. Do you remember Most CDs? kids nowadays won't. I used to burn mad CDs oh, like yeah, that was my used to make mad CDs. Yeah, for sure. Your middle school. I was on middle school. I saw LimeWire. Nothing but viruses. Straight up. <laughs> we weren't downloading music on there. I know what you were downloading. You got one bolt on the bottom. That's it. The only thing that sucks about that is this thing strips out really easily. This isn't the right way to do it. It's just the scary way to do it. Oh my god. Don't do it this way. <laughs> I'm just being lazy. It's like a side of Look at it. <laughs> Horrible idea. Just unbolt your upper arm. That feels so loud. <laughs> it, feel, it feels sketchy. Is it sketchy? That, that looks sketchy. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't believe you didn't warn me that you were unbolting them. Of course guys, we went with BC Racing Coilovers. Jimmy, why do you always go with BC Racing Coilovers? Oh my god, there's so many coils in the market. Why do you always do that? Blah, blah, blah. It's so predictable of you. Because they work great. They're an affordable price. They last. They don't seize. They ride good. They just work. I don't think we've ever been disappointed with the set. Every single car in here. And I've tried buying other coilovers and I've never been like, ah, oh, yeah, that's it. That was the move. You always Basic. end up back to your first love, you know? Uh, is this your first set of coilers that you bought for a car? Um, BCs? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna lie and say that my the first I ever bought was PBM. BC was the second. Fair enough. Gangster. Yeah. BCs were mine. Yeah? yeah. They're good. That's good stuff. They're always in stock. They're good quality. You could get them rebuilt really quick and they're warranted. It's just like... I think my first set was the set of teens. That's, that's classic. Yeah, that's classic. Ooh, check these out. Check these out. Oh, say it with me. Oh, oh. 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 no, RJ, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, it's always one. Oh. Oh. Man, those are nice. That was a good one. <laughs> these should be extreme low, so as you can tell, how much shorter these things are. These are meant to go oh, extremely you want, low. You want full avian spec? Oh yeah, no, this thing's gonna be useless. It's gonna be spring sick. rates, boy. Hit them with them. What did I do for? So no, it's just an out of box set. I trusted the, so the eights in the front. Got eights in the front, and then we probably got. Oh, these are just an uh, off the shelf set of. BC, uh, BR, extreme list. You can get custom sets from BC, you just gotta email you them. You can. Yeah. You can, uh, you can get Swift Springs, custom spring rates, and they'll, they'll valve the shock accordingly to the spring rate, whatever you need. Easy piece. Tens in the rear. 
And the front. And the rear, perfect. Now these are real easy. Um, they already come set with a little bit of preload on the spring, which you want. You wanna make sure this thing isn't loose and jumping around in there, right? Just a little bit of preload on them. And then make sure our camber plate is in the right orientation, right? Because they could kind of sit in a few different ways. So we want the camber plate to work perpendicular to the suspension. Put it in there like this. There we go. See how the camber plate sits. To be fair, if you, you could actually run them as a caster plate if you want. Because if you rotate the top hat, the adjustment instead of being this way will be this way. And you could use that to adjust caster if you need more caster. Sometimes it's just a pain in the ass to get caster out of these things with the lollipops. But you can get caster out of the top hat if you rotate it. And you can get a camber with spacers on the... So I'm not going to talk about that one. These are extreme lows, and look how low this already looks out of the box. <laughs> oh my god. Aiden would be proud. Night ride boys. That's the energy. That's who I want to make proud on this one. True. I want them to like watch True, true, like, true. Yeah. I have to redeem myself for not having a low E36. Every second I was in Poland, they just ripped on me for not having a my E36 low enough. The rear's tricky. The rear's a pain in the ass to adjust because you actually have to drop the shock every single time to get this out. So this looks like a shorter spring than we had in the red car, and the red car was pretty low in the rear. You wanted it lower. I did. Because the overfenders made the arches higher. We'll start with this. Should we just bottom it out? Let's bottom it out. Yeah, let's do that. When we adjust the length of the shock, we have to make sure we don't have too much sag, right? So obviously we have the variating height of the spring and the very high, variating height of the shock. Some guys like to leave the shock loose so they can kind of slip their spring in and out. I don't want that. I want as much shock as we could use. So basically, wherever this sits with the spring, we want this barely compressed. All right, good. It's like perfect, right? Up a little more. All right, so these are 17 by eight and a half plus 11, I think, in the front. Quite aggressive for an E36. So the the front we could always camber pretty easily. The rear I'm a little worried about. We might have to get juicy with things. Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah. Oh. We do have a set of overs upstairs. No. No. I'm just saying. Worst case. That oh. looks so good on the red. That's so sick. Also keep in mind that the wheels and the car are both filthy. It's still gonna be a vibe with no arrow on it. It looks good with no arrow. Imagine how good it looks with all arrow on it. The front we can always add camera. The rear I'm gonna be nervous about fender for me because it was tight on the coupe. We don't really need that much though. See, here's the problem. With especially, this is a big thing in the rear, right? When you have a Japanese car, you have a little bit of poke, right? When you hit a bump, it cambers in, right? Mm -hmm. It's nice. BMWs, since they are the superior grip chassis. They don't camber at all. They don't camber when they squat. So wherever the lip sits, it just goes like basically straight up. So you can't really poke them, which sucks because like that little bit of poke looks aggressive and cool, doesn't it? We all, we all. That just means we need some stiffer yeah. springs. Yeah, we need just these <laughs> stiffer springs, right? We're basically back in a predicament that I made the coupe like, the E36 coupe like three and a half years ago where I was like, wow, I made it really fast. But it's useless. <laughs> what do I do with it? <laughs> you know? Give me t oh, give me two and a half more years, this thing will be a good for. To be oh, fair, bad. it's not that's bad. So that's not good. bad. That's not See, if this was a Japanese car, I'd be like, man, it's gonna camera right in, but that's a little That's not bad. That's a I little, thought it was gonna be worse. Well, how you doing? As they say. That is so good. That is good. On the calypso. Alright, let's get some tires on these things. Since we have such aggressive fitment, we're gonna put a pretty small tire on these things. The ones that were on it previously were pretty good. I think it was 215 in the rear, 205 in the front. It's a small tire because we have a nine and a half rear. 215 on nine and a half, love that. That's, that's, that's good. We've done a lot of performance stuff lately. We can go back to making useless street cars again. Love that. Yes, sir. Ah, look at that. You know, that's, that's barely a stretch. That yeah. thing looks like a radio on that's here. That's good. You know, like maybe we'll put the 205 in the rear. That's what I'm saying. We need a 35 sidewall. I think we usually got a 35 sidewall. Oh, that's a good looking stretch, yeah, that's, boys. That's, that's, that's 
god. We have done way too much performance car shit. I love this. Uh, Doing some stand stuff here and there is good. The way it stretches are really nice because instead of it bowing out, because some of them bow out, this one actually kind of swoops in, which will give us more room for fitment. The front, we have the 20540 uh, on 8.5. This should be a similar stretch. Claire has this really special lock nut right there. You see how it's like a security tab in the middle and it's like a 14 point. How are you ever supposed to get your wheels off? Someone can never steal my wheels, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice work, Claire. You really did your thing on that one. Don't be stealing, don't be stealing my wheels. There we go. The caps I think are rarer than the wheels. Beautiful wheels, brand new tires, brand new suspension, crusty ass brakes. We won't talk about that. So I don't have adjustable camera arms right now, so let's hope that we get lucky. You feeling lucky, Steve? Always, every day. It's gonna be oh, close. Oh, that's good. The toe is so messed up right now. It's gonna rub bad. We also, we could roll the fenders more. They're like factory rolled pretty nice to be, like, to be fair, but I'd like to not have to roll the arch on this. Front, we could always have a camber pretty easily. We're definitely gonna need camber yeah, in the front. Need it. It's funny how a 20540 looks big, doesn't it? We should get a decent amount of camber out of the top pads. Well, that's good. That's good. What should we make? got a little more? No, that's all of it? I know, it'd be nice if we can get like one more degree out of it. Oh, there we go. Oh, there oh. we go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> It's just sitting on the tire. <sighs> the front's nice. Ooh, the front. Fuck, we gotta add more camera. This is good. Problem is, you know, if this is a Nissan, we could leave it like this. You could roll it a little bit and it'll just kind of curl in when you hit a bump. BMW, I'm telling you, just goes straight up and straight down. So it needs like two degrees of camber. I knew these were aggressive in the rear. These are nine and a half, like plus 11 or plus 15. Either way, that's really aggressive for an E36. But if there's a will, there's a way. These are thick quarters, dude. And if Of course, first step. Make sure all the dirt that's in this inside lip is out, or else you're gonna roll the metal around the dirt. So there's an eccentric bolt on the factory camber arm, and it was maxed out all the way, so it had minimal camber. So we can max out the other way, and it might give us a degree or two, which might be enough just to get it in the arch without having to put uh, adjustable arms on. Let's see, what did that give us? Get in there. Get in there. Damn it. <laughs> I thought it had it. It's such a thick quarter. It's, it's gonna need more camera than I thought. Our wheels still fit too aggressive. I knew these were aggressive wheels. I just forgot how aggressive. So, uh, since we can't modify the offset of the wheel, or honestly, offset of, I guess, your hub, we have to play with either widening the arch on the body or adding camber. Uh, camber is kind of a vibe. I guess we got to figure out how much camber we have to add and where we can get it. So luckily with the BMW, um, it's kind of like one upper swing arm, which is the spring bucket right here. If we just change the mounting position of that slightly more inward, it'll give us a lot of camber. Sometimes when you pull the bottom out, you get camber, but it also pulls the whole hub out. But if you rotate the top in, it's all just pushing the wheel inside the arch, right? So I think we could ovalize where the spring bucket bolts onto the knuckle. What are you thinking? Why not? People be doing crazy yeah. stuff for fitment and you don't see it. It's like the dirty, like, it's like the dark, dirty secrets of the, the, the car scene Space is like. world. What people have to do for fitment. This Milwaukee right hand impact, this thing kicks ass, dude. So, here we go. If we look at the upper arm right here, right? See the two mounting points? 
If we ovalize this, we probably only need like five mils. Watch, if we change that melting point, see how it rotates it in quite a bit. If we can get two degrees out of it, I think we'll be good to go. All right, so we have the spring out and we have the arm disconnected. So we're gonna, this, let's see. That's where we want it. So we ovalize the top hole, so now you can see like, how much camera adjustment we get out of it. You see that? So now, we can get it in there. Whoa, we're so close, look at it. You can just see the sidewall flex a little bit. Does that look ridiculous on the camber? No, it's not bad. <laughs> no. You're probably at like eight, eight, eight degrees. There, it's not. Eight degrees. No, oh, that, that's eight degrees. Get the iPhone. It, the iPhone used to have it built in. I got it. The compass. Remember the compass mm -hmm. used to have it built in? Hell yeah. Stick that bitch on the, uh, on the rotor. Here. All right. Put it on the rotor. See it. I can see it. <laughs> so we have to take his word for it. You're good. Eight degrees, right? It's seven, but I'll give it to you. I know what I'm talking about. It needs eight. Well, that's a lot of time. Whatever. We're here. We're here for a good time, not a long time, you know? See, now we basically made our own eccentric on the upper. It's eight mils. Eight mils gave us like four degrees, which is pretty crazy. Hopefully this is enough. When we had it all loose, uh, we were able to get enough room out of it, but now that everything's tight, hopefully it didn't you know, things move a little bit. There we go, there we go, don't do it, come on. Oh, that thing's sitting. Sit on the tire. Nope. It's not hitting. It's close, but it's not hitting. Are we two for two? Yeah. This side's got a little bit more room. That's good. This side has a little bit more camber. Not bad, though. Austin, you sit just put some man in there. <laughs> Keep hitting. Okay. Let's rub it on that side a little bit on the tire. Rub it in the same. Oh, this one's not bad. That one will like. Yeah, so it's the sidewall of the tire, which we can. It'll self clearance. Shave. We can shave. <laughs> so right here. Because you might got a fruit pillar. Right here, this is what's hitting. We can't shave this. A lot of people do. Yeah, it'll you know what the crazy part is? The alignment's toe-wise is like perfect. No way. No way, right? It looks nuts. Usually it gets exaggerated. It's maybe towed in what, a, six, of an inch? a sixteenth. That's crazy. We got really lucky, holy shit. We're gonna add a little bit more front camber. The rear has seven degrees. That's not bad. That's not horrendous. The front, if we can just get like five out of it, we'll be good to go. So the front's easy to get more camber out of. If you run out of uh, camber adjustment on the top hat, these two lower ones, you see how it bolts the bottom of the coil to the knuckle? You put spacers between it, watch, because if you do this, you, you get more camber. You see that? So BC actually gives you washers to put in there. I would suggest getting longer bolts, though, if you have them. You can get, a, I mean, look, you can get infinite camber as long as you have the right <laughs> bolt length and washers. Probably will only give us a degree, but I'll take it. You know what I mean? All right. So that that washer gave us probably another degree of camber, which makes the wheel look even. It look, makes the car look even lower, doesn't it? The front, we, the front, you don't want like credit card tight. The rear, as long as it doesn't hit, you're good. But since we have, since we need to turn the wheel and stuff like that, you got to be careful with the gap. To be fair, if I wanted to never have to worry about it, I'd either have to go to a slightly smaller tire or add one more degree of camber if I wanted to keep this right height. This will, this will probably rub if I'm not like. I'm gonna have to cautiously think about this when I do big turns. God, does that look good? It's a little low. I don't care. Let's pull it out. Let's see how she looks, dude. Come on, baby, you got this. You got this. Give me useless fitment. The rear camera looks a little fucking nuts. It's like kind of the style of it, right? God, these wheels are so aggressive on this car. That front fitment, yo. So cool. The rear, that's just camber gang. It just looks dorky because you can't poke it at all. It has to be inside the wheel arch, all of it, or else it rubs. Oh my God, dude. Aiden would be so proud. I mean, what's the point of, of, of a wagon if you can't drag the damn thing? Oh, that's good. The fact that Spoon likes it says a lot too, so. It's a wagon, it's not an E36 thing. 
it's a wagon thing. The wheels look so good on the color. The car is filthy and the wheels are filthy and it looks so good still on camera. Hold up. The sedan front. I don't mind the stock body. So good. It's a vibe just like no arrow, but I'm telling you, once it gets full M arrow, it just is like, it does, it does a lot for it. It's crazy. That's good it, shit. It's good shit, right? Holy f the only that stops. The only thing that sucks about E36 is, is they like they're pitch forward, so like you gotta slam the rear, or else the car like watch, like see, look at if you could tell the rear is lower, but the car is still pitch forward. You gotta rake them. It's really annoying. You have to you have to tuck the rear. Yeah, you have to go fender to lip in the front. Exactly, you have to tuck the rear. So I think we should raise the front maybe a half inch and leave the rear or lower the rear because right now it just it's squatted forward. It's got so much. It's got so much rake, but uh, let's see it outside before we make any big judgments. The front's not rubbing in reverse, right? A uh, way you like ruin a fender. It's backing it up and it just grabs it. We're good. Got like this much contact patch. Always rubbing bad. There you go. We'll rub itself away. We'll be good. I mean, if we roll the front back there. That's <laughs> You ready for the slabba labba ding dong over here? Yes, please flip that camera. All right, the the the, uh, the car's filthy right now, but I think I gotta I gotta balance the rake out more because you know they be doing E36 things. You ready? Mm -hmm. You ready for it? I'm ready, baby. God, bro, let me see the front three quarter angle. Oh my God, that looks so good. I'm proud of you. You went low. Hell yeah. Yeah, this, this thing's stupid right now. Perfect. <laughs> Literally perfect. Let me see the, like, how tight is it? How tight is this thing, man? Okay, yeah. It's okay, yeah. It just cleared. Yeah, if you need, you can narrow the rear end. What I did with my sedan, I got adjustable. Lowers, oh, I just oh yeah, narrow every. Well, well, I got adjustable lowers and then I notched the uppers and then I just sunk the whole rear end in. About yeah, you're right. So yeah, so pull the whole hub in with the with both arms versus just cambering it. I want to take some of the camera out and keep the fitment. The uppers are already in, so if we pull the lower in, it'll just pull the whole wheel in. So we could take some camera out if we wanted to, but it works. Yeah, just narrow that bitch. Oh, there he is, Woogie. Oh. Wagwan. Wagwan, my you. Are you sleeping? Nah, I'm going to the club. <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need. Wait, I'll, I'll turn on the light. Yo, how you doing? I'm good. I need you to rate my uh, my ride height on my E36. Show me your ride height. It's OEM fender. Yeah. That's that's good. <laughs> <laughs> we got him. Right, hold up for the rear. Go for the rear. <laughs> Show me, show me how wide it is. Well, I can't poke oh. it too much because it's a stock quarter, but. Ah, uh, okay. It's perfect. Yeah, but fuck, it's it's good. <laughs> for American, for Americans, that's really decent. For American, it's decent, he <laughs> says. <laughs> well, we might have slammed this thing on its nuts, but it's still more useful than my other E36. <laughs> <laughs> That one got spooked. That was good. That was a good one. <laughs> good one. <laughs> the rear isn't rubbing too bad. It just went in a rear arch is in the front. The front's definitely rubbing. The front's definitely rubbing. We never rolled the front fenders. So roll the front fenders. Maybe add a degree of camber. Or at oh. least 
raise it up. Or raise, I'm, I'm not, Matt, I wouldn't mind raising the front like the littlest bit, but a hair. a hair will give you so much drivability, it's wild. Um, but what's nice about the E36 is, nothing really hangs on them. Like, they're just flat underneath, so like if you bottom them out, they don't really like. What's the lowest part of the car? Exhaust. Hmm. It is what it is. At least it's not the oil pan. Exactly. I'm impressed we got these wheels to fit, because they did not fit. <laughs> they did not want to. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a game, every time. Especially when you just order random specs online, and you're like, ah. I'll make it work. It. I'll make it work. These are really aggressive specs for the rear. We kind of knew it. I feel like the wheels are kind of meant for like an E30 M3, to be fair. Why E30 M3? <laughs> yeah, it's on the list. On the list of many, right? Oh, we have a lot of work ahead of us in other categories. So we're going to end the video for today. If you guys didn't cop your Porsche merch yet, of course, we have the new hoodie. We have the new tee. Uh, we have the two new keychains. We have the Canadian I'd call it Canadian collab, like we collabed with Canada, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, Canadian collab. We collabed with Canada on that one. A lot of people missed it because we couldn't take cash in Canada. Yeah, we sold out, to be fair, we sold out in Canada in like two hours with those okay. t-shirts. Yeah. It's cool. So I love you guys. You guys are the best. So, for now, you know the deal. Like, comment about it, subscribe. To see, see, see some more. To see some more. Whatever falls in place. <laughs> Have a great night.